Dolphin, for instance, it is not a totally banned uh, species, but it is a controlled species. It is controlled based on the population. If the population blame is seen to be under threat, then there will be concerns about it. There are dolphin traders that you know exist here in this country that buys uh, dolphins from fishermen and then keep them in captivity, captivity for quite a period of time, train them and then export them to dol dolphin rams around the world. The first trader ever exists here is Chris Porter, who is a Canadian, and he has a local partner by the name Robert Satcher. And the second trader is um, Dr. Anita, who is a vet himself. And the third is Francis Chow. Dolphin export has been a controversial issue over the past years. Up until then, you know, towards the end of last year, um, we caught them, uh, Dr. Anita exported. 28 dolphins out of this country illegally. So then that's when the government came into play that, you know, they, they slow it down and then they don't issue any license anymore because of that issue. Well, actually, I think the, the proper words to, to, to define, you know, to describe that sort of activity is smuggling. It is smuggling because they don't have valid license to export. And it slipped through the fingers of the, you know, the law enforcement authorities of this country, talking about the police, the customs, the quarantine department. They have no clue about this export. No. I have all the legal documents there. If we smuggle, why did the plane come to Henderson Airport, the port of entry and export of Solomon Islands? Why was the police there? Why was the customs there? Why was the immigration there to clear all the flight? And we paid all our customs duty. Is that smuggling? Well, the government keep on saying publicly that there's a, an investigation that's going to happen. Up until then, there's no investigation, and I knew totally that there's no such investigation that is in place at the moment. So since they kept these dolphins, Dr. Anita kept these dolphins, and Francis Chow kept these dolphins in their pants, they are withholding the, these um, poor animals in captivity without license. So what they were doing at the moment is illegal as well. They don't have license to... to to keep dolphins in captivity. Uh, animals, when we get them, we make sure that we give them the best treatment. Even drugs, we get all our drugs from the states to treat them, make sure that they are in good, perfect health. You know, there, are, there is a, a dolphin pen at the back of the Prime Minister's office in Honiara, on the coast of Honiara. And uh, these dolphins were kept there illegally. And um, according to the Fisheries Department, there was no license issued for Francis Chow to keep these dolphins in captivity. And that is the reason why they don't have any monitoring program with these animals. And um, at the same time, it is saddening me to see when they open up the coconut cafeteria, cafe, it is the Prime Minister himself who went and opened that uh, caf uh, coconut cafe. And the government has not, uh, done nothing on this. Oh, they, are, they are kept in bad conditions, the water is too shallow. And, and you can't keep dolphins in such condition and in such temperature and in such depth because dolphins are animals that swims you know for, for miles and they dive in they dive in depths they, they, they were wild caught dolphins they were not bred in captivity they were wild caught dolphins you know Park, currently or since we have attracted from 50, between 50 to 100 kids just to come down and see the dolphins. Um, and the number is growing, regardless whether it's an expat or local. For many, for many of the kids and our people here, their highlight will be just inches away from the dolphin. For a lot of kids, that is their, their life, lifetime dream. And we have, uh, we are very pleased to actually fulfill that for them. They used to be catching dolphins by the thousands. I come in and tell them, no, stop the catching of the thousands, killing them by the thousands. We just export 25 or 50 based on the government quota. And uh, it's, it's more value added. We are law-abiding citizens. We don't want to break the law. We have to go abide by what the law says. So that's why, uh, as I have said, we make sure I advise the community, you have to be registered 
you have to get your provincial license, you have to get your uh, facility license, you have to get your uh, collection license, you have to get uh, the uh, export permit from the CITES Management Authority. Then before you can think about exporting, and you have to have all blood tests done. So we sent most of the blood to uh, University of Georgia, USA, for tests. And when all that comes back and everything is in order, then you can talk about export. The current quota uh, authorized by the government to export dolphins is not sustainable from what we found in the wild population here in Guadalcanal in the, in the islands around. And uh, even the effective number of dolphins that was exported, which is below the, the actual quota, is not sustainable. So to be sustainable for the population, it will have to be reduced drastically.